one of the reasons that people don't put content out there consistently is due to the fear of judgment. What if you get the facts wrong? What if you have a typo or grammatical error in your writing? What if you don't sound as eloquent as you wish you did? What if later you change your opinions? So, I mean, all those fears and concerns are valid. It's true. You might get the facts wrong. You might sound stupid. You might have accidentally offend a whole group of people. That's true. So what do you do? So should you just stop? Should you wait until you are perfectly knowledgeable about everything and you will never change your opinions because you've learned everything there is to, to know and then put stuff out there? Good luck. <laughs> you will be waiting until the end of eternity, which is never. <laughs> okay, so of course, as I phrase it like that, you realize, wow, it is really silly to wait until I'm ready because that means I will have stopped learning, right? Getting the facts wrong, well, by the way, evidence keeps changing. And I mean, we know if, we, if you follow any kind of dieting and nutrition, you know that you know, every few years, something that used to be really super healthy is now bad for you, or something that used to be bad for you is not so bad for you anymore. Facts change. I mean, that's just one field, you know, you know nutrition, which is relevant to, to everybody, all of us eat. But what about other things? I mean, in business, right? Some things that used to be uh, popular are now not so popular. I'm sure some things that are, you know, not seen as uh, the good things to do will be popular later. I don't know. Things will keep changing. And so if you wait until facts are static and your knowledge is static before you put stuff out there, you won't put stuff out there. And therefore you won't grow an audience and it will be hard to grow a business. By the way, I'm trying something different today. Have you noticed anything different today about, about if you've watched my other videos? Well, I'll give, you, I'll give it to you. Um, I'm not wearing my earpiece. My earpiece is right here. And I decided I'm just trying out the, uh, the microphone for my, uh, that's part of my webcam. So those of you who have watched my other videos, compare the two, compare a previous video where I'm wearing these things and, and compare this one and let me know if, uh, how the audio is, uh, and if I should do it like this or if I should put on my, my earphones again and, and, and record it that way. Okay, so uh, a couple of things about dealing with judgment couple ways, a couple things that might be helpful for you. One is the, the, the thing that we've all heard, which is you are a much harsher critic of yourself than your audience will ever be. Truly, all these self-judgments and inner criticism, what if I get the facts wrong? What if I change my opinion? What if I sound stupid? What if I have typos and gram grammatical errors? What if there was a perfect client that was reading or watching my thing and because of my thing, they decided not to work with me anymore? Yeah, by the way, all those things have happened to me and I'm still here and I'm still, and not just me. I know this is gonna sound like a ridiculous example, but, who is the president of my country? Okay, even the one of the most pathological liars ever to put, you know put it, to run my country is in office today. Everybody agrees that he he's if you're a Democrat he's a pathological liar. If you're a Republican he just is very you know loose loose with his uh, with what he says. I mean, however you want to say it, he is. <laughs> Whatever things that he says is often not tied even to verifiable fact today, let alone something that's obscure. No, no, just, people can easily look it up and go, wait, he didn't, he just said that? That's not true. But he's in power. He has the, the highest office in the world, okay? People love him. No, no, not certain people, but many people love him, okay? And um, so, Okay, so just using that silly example, I have just proven to you that facts don't matter when it comes to building an audience. Now, of course, truth matters, obviously. 
um, truth is, you know, I believe, I believe in two things, truth and love. Or let's flip it around. Love first and then truth. Okay, let's, for example, read the Bible from a point, point of view of love. All right, and, and then, and then we'll, we might get it right. Um, love, then truth. Uh, but truth, of obviously, Matt, what I'm, what I'm just giving you a, a, an extreme example is that if you don't care, if, if you're even someone like Trump who doesn't care about facts, you just create, he creates lots of content, lots of speeches, lots of whatever over the years, and he has a huge audience who love him absolutely. Now, again, that's not my example, and that's not my, my model or hero by any means, but that's an anti-hero. That's an anti-example of, God, if, if even he can do it, right, then why should we be afraid of facts? We, why should we be afraid of getting, getting the truth wrong? And again, back to that silly example, he rambles all the time and says random, and I ramble all the time too. And here you are watching me. I have an audience that, yes, you might leave after this, but I still, I still, so bottom line, forget trying to get facts right. Do your best, but don't let it stop you from writing or from making videos. Just say what is true now. Honestly, 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 you've got to get this into your head. Just say what you feel is right and true now. That's authenticity. Authenticity is this is what I believe. This is how I'm living. This is what I've been telling my clients. This is what I am basing my reality on right now. And yes, if I <clears throat> learn something new, if I learn that I was not right, I will tell you. I will tell you, you know what? I learned something. I used to really advocate for this and this and this, and I realized that I was wrong. And what is this? here's what I advocate for instead. And yes, you will always lose people. You will always, no matter what you do, no matter if you are the most brilliant writer, or the, you make the most amazing videos, you, you send out the best email newsletters, you're always going to get unsubscribes. Always. Doesn't matter. It's not you. It's them. Okay? Or it's just not the right time for them to be following you for whatever reason. So don't be afraid of losing people. You're going to lose people all the time. But here's the thing. Here's... And this, this, may, this may be a revelation for you. We are not trying to keep people forever, okay, as part of our audience. You're going to lose people all the time, and you're going to gain people all the time if you keep creating, if you keep distributing your content. You're going to gain people all the time. You're going to lose people all the time. Some of the people you lost will come back to you after a few years. Some of the people you thought were your big fan, biggest fans they're going to hear, mishear something, and they're gonna, you're going to lose them forever. You don't know. And so you've got to just not worry about that because it's too much to worry about. So what, did, what is your job? Your job is not to be concerned. If you are right, if you sound smart, if you are uh, you know, writing without typos, if you're speaking without stumbles, that's not your job. Your job as an authentic business creator, as an authentic audience builder, is to show up and be true and be loving. Let's put that. Show up and be loving and be true. And that's it. And that's it. And you show up consistently with love and with, with truth as you understand truth to be right now, knowing that may, your understanding will grow and evolve. That's your job. That's it. Not worried about if people are going to like it, love it, hate it lose people doesn't matter doesn't matter people the most perfect client ever in the whole world who will make your entire business will hear one thing you say and say no i'm not going to work with you i'm sure i have lost plenty of people like that i am sure in fact i've even heard you know and then sometimes they come back and go my god you're still making videos you're still writing well now i now i finally get what you're saying okay it's it's be in it for the long haul and don't worry about the loss of people, you know, whether you'll gain enough people, just show up. Okay, that's your job. It's your audience's job to tell you whether something you said was resonant or something you wrote was life-changing or not. If something you wrote or, 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 or recorded was not helpful, here's what's going to happen. 
No, you're not going to get a bunch of negative comments and go, you are stupid. Uh, this is the truth. And you, and no, that's not what happens. What happens is that you just won't hear from anybody. What happens is that you just won't get any comments. You get, won't get any likes, or maybe you get fewer than usual. That's what happens when you choose a topic that's not as interesting for your audience. It's actually, I've said this in other videos before, it's not the execution of your content. It's the choice of topic. Honestly, that, that's the biggest part of it. Yes, of course, if you make a nicer edited video, if you are a better speaker, if you're a better writer, it does amplify. It does amplify uh, good things, but it's the topic that you choose every day on a daily basis, subtopic, topic, whatever you choose to talk about. It doesn't matter if you make the biggest mistakes in your grammar or, or you're, you don't sound as eloquent. If you've got the right topic for the right audience, they're going to respond. That's just the bottom line. That's what I've discovered again and again and again. Some of my most eloquent videos were on topics that my audience just goes over my audience's head and they don't like it as much as my usual, my other videos. It's not you, okay? It's them and it's the topic. That's, that's it. You just have to show up and go, what do I want to talk about today? And maybe you do some planning in advance. But these days, I don't even plan in advance. Actually, I'm, <laughs> I just realized uh, I have been kind of going off the cuff uh, in terms of my topics for, for probably half a year now. And uh, upcoming, uh, I'm going to be <clears throat> starting to kind of put together, all right, if I had 100 ideas, if I have 100 ideas that I want to communicate about authentic business, and that's it, then I, then I die, what must those 100 ideas be? And I'm going to start brainstorming that and, and kind of put looking at my old stuff and trying to put, put together that list of 100 ideas. But um, up to now, I mean, really, not just for six months, for a lot of the time, I've just been going like, well, this week I feel like talking about this, or today I feel like talking about that. And then, and, and here's the other dynamic, okay? One, I said, um, just to recap what we said so far, you are a much harsher judge uh, than your audience will ever be. And secondly, you will always lose people, no matter how smart and pretty, handsome, uh, eloquent, uh, amazing poetic writer you are you will always lose people always 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 but if you keep showing up you will always gain people too okay and it's just not only does it balance out hopefully if you keep showing up enough and you know you know how to distribute your content for example through facebook ads then you just keep growing over time because you'll just keep losing people gaining more losing some gaining more and it just keeps going up gradually over time okay that's that's how it works okay and third point is you won't know whether or not something is going to work before you put it out there. You can journal all you want, you can write on it privately all you want, but until you publish, until you click post, you will not know whether something is going to go viral or something is going to be flat. Honestly, I am <laughs> five years, I, I've been in business 10 years, I've been creating content consistently for almost five years now, and, and as a prolific content creator, I am still surprised almost every week. Wow, that thing I thought would do really well, people didn't get it, okay? And then something else, I thought, well, it, it's, sometimes I'm rehashing the same thing, I'm saying the same thing again. People loved it. I mean, I, I, I can't, honestly, I can, I, I've stopped predicting. I, I don't know. And that's what I hope you will take on as well. Just say, I don't know if this is gonna do well. I just have to put it out there. That's the only way you'll know. Just like with a product or service, people always ask me, George, you think this is gonna sell? I say, I'll give you my personal opinion, but I'm one person and I might not even be your ideal client. I, as, as I learn more and more marketing, I learn one thing, test. And you, you, if you talk to any smart marketers, they will sell you the same thing. All the marketing tactics and strategies and predictions and forecasts and trends that I've learned, I've learned one thing, experiment. That's all I've learned in 10 years, I'm sorry to say. That's, I mean, yes, everything else is the details, but the main message you must take home and tattoo on your forehead, <clears throat> at least a temporary tattoo, <laughs> just put a sticker on there, experiment. That's all I really know. Everything else, how to run Facebook ads, how to do videos, how to write books, how to, blah, 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 how to get clients, all those are details. 
Because if you know experiment, if, you, that's, if that's all one thing you know, then you are freed up to try everything. Everything. Because something that might work, that might totally not work for me, might work amazingly for you. And something that works amazingly for me might not work for you at all. So there is no one single truth. There is no savior for you in marketing. None. The only savior is the word experiment. That's it. Sorry to say. There is no one right way in marketing. There isn't. Not for everybody. Because <laughs> for some people, sales funnels work amazingly well and they can do it authentically. Wonderful. Keep doing it. Some people don't like to be organized like I am and they just do whatever any day, every day. They just, and it works for them. They get lots of clients. And for some people, obviously, it doesn't work at all. Right? So it's it, experiment. That's, you can stop watching my videos and reading my articles and stop reading my books and stop taking my courses now. Okay? The rest of everything I'll ever say to you is entertainment. That's it. Entertainment, maybe some inspiration. But the one teaching I have is, is, is to experiment. That's it. Um, and those of you who are marketers know what I'm talking about. That's it. The better you get as a marketer, as the smarter you get as a seller, marketer, business owner, you realize, my God, there's only one thing. There's only experiment. And I think that's probably true with any, any field, right? The more you know, the more you learn, the more you realize you don't know. All you know is details, but the one thing we know is everybody has their own path. Everybody has to, has to try out lots of things until they figure it out. Now, obviously, people like me can inspire you and give you some ways to experiment, but that's it. So to recap, you're only judging yourself, so stop judging yourself. How do you stop judging yourself? Appreciate, okay, uh, actually, I would love to know. I mean, there's, there are more of you out here who, are, who have studied the inner critic than I have. I've never studied the inner critic. I've never, I don't, never read articles about it. I just kind of go from my own experience. I just make stuff up, okay? So uh, how, how did I get over my inner critic? Well, I'll tell you how I do it is I do a practice many times a day called, I call it energy reboot. Some people probably call it intentional breathing. Some people call it prayer. Some people call it meditation. Some people call it mindfulness. But I, you've seen me do this before. If you've seen my other videos, I hold my hands to my heart. I breathe in love. I breathe out total, complete security. I breathe in love again. I breathe out joy or playfulness, switching between the two. And then, you know, I breathe in the virtue I'm focusing on for the week. I, I breathe that, that out and out of my pores, I breathe that virtue out into, you know, and then kind of, I, I think about the, the upcoming thing that I'm doing. For example, this video, I breathe in, you know, that virtue again, I breathe it out into this, into, into the thing I'm doing. I mean, that's, that's it. I, I know I just summarized, but that thing that I do, uh, it takes me about 10 to 20 seconds. And I do it probably twice an hour, every waking hour. And I've been doing it for years. And that helps me a lot. The, I don't think I have an inner critic anymore. I, I just, I think the inner critic has left. And like, well, I guess you don't listen to us. We're going. You, but you might have a different way. Some people... Uh, music might help, um, prayer, um, you know, therapy, you know, working with a coach. All these things will help get your inner critic out of there. But just know that your inner critic is just, it's, it's illusion. I mean, if I can help you with a shortcut, it's just an illusion and you don't have to listen to it. You could replace any time an inner critic thought comes in, you just replace it with, I am loved. I am, <laughs> the path is perfectly the path is, my destiny is perfect. My destiny is secured. That's what I mean by total security when I breathe that out. It's, it's true. Your destiny, it, well, that's what I believe. And it depends on your worldview. But I believe that your destiny, I believe, if I may, that your destiny towards ultimate, perfect love, wisdom, power, creativity, freedom, beauty, enjoyment, lightheartedness, faith your destiny is secure that's it so there's nothing you can do to screw it up nothing i don't care if you commit the biggest heinous crimes in the world god is bigger than that god is way way bigger than that 
and your destiny is secure. It doesn't matter if you're the, you make the biggest mistakes and makes mistakes every second of every day, your destiny is still secure. God and the angels or whatever you want to call it, your higher self, your, how, however you want to call it, the universe will inevitably lead you toward more wisdom, love, understanding, creativity, freedom, power, goodness, beauty, joy, all the good stuff. It's inevitable. So we can relax and we can play. That's what, <laughs> so that's what content is for, is for you to play, to explore, to love your audience, to um, speak the truth that you understand to be true now that some people might resonate with and other people might completely not resonate with. That's their job to resonate or not resonate. It's your job to speak. It's your job to write. It's your job to share. So with that, I think that's probably enough for today. And I hope this is helpful in some small way. Um, the other thing that you'll notice that I don't do, I try not to, is you know how a lot of video makers say, especially at the beginning of their videos, please share, subscribe, like, comment. It makes a, means the world to me, blah, blah, blah. Or they say that at the front, sometimes they say that the front and the end or just the end. Well, notice I don't do that. I don't tell you to like or, well, I, I sometimes tell you to comment because I'm actually curious what you're going to say, but because I want to know your opinion. But I never just say comment, share, like, whatever. You know why? I would rather get fewer reactions but honest ones than to have you coddle my ego and pressure you to praise me and all. And, and yeah, it, one thing is psychologically better, psychologically healthier not to do that, in my opinion. But secondly, you get better data. If you never tell people to subscribe, like, share, comment, you just get better data. Or I guess you could say, if you always say that, then, then maybe it's always you know, a certain level. But I, I just think sometimes you might say it in a more winsome way that gets people to like, comment, and, and I just don't wanna play those games. I want honest reactions. I want honest feedback because that is how I will know which pieces of my content I should do more with, right? Because that's how you create better and better content over the years is to always speak your truth, always love your audience, but you also combine that with looking at the data and saying, well, when I talk about this, they really love it. When I talk about that, they don't get it at all. So if they don't get it at all, maybe I should try saying it a different way. If they love this, I should keep making more stuff like that because it, it's my truth also. It's, it's what I love to say if it's still true for me. So um, yeah, anyway, that, that's all I want to say. So please, please never like my things, never comment, never share, unless you actually genuinely say this is helpful because otherwise I'm going to get false data. Okay. So anyway, thank you for, uh, for, for that. All right. I'm just going to read out a couple of the comments. I uh, appreciate those of you who are able to join me live. Linda and uh, Linda says, sounds great. Captain says, audio is good enough, but earphones are better. This one has background echoes. Yeah. So um, thank you. Yeah. Um, uh, now there's a trade-off. Is it, is it significantly bad looking to have this? Okay. Um, I didn't plug it in yet, but trading off between the look of this versus the sound, you know, the sound of this, right? So I'll have to, I'll have to think about that. Um, and let's see. And, and Alejandra, thank you, says, the point is not to be our best or to be liked. The point is to serve by sharing meaningful content. Yeah, meaningful to you. Who knows if it's meaningful to them? It's meaningful to you. And of course, it's meaningful to you. It's of course going to be meaningful for s at least some of your ideal client, ideal you know, audience members right now. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> uh, Alejandra says, T-O-T-E, test, operate, test, and exit. That's cool. I like that. Um, nice. All right. Well, thanks. thanks for all of you who are joining me live here. Captain... Krista, Alejandra, Jane, Gudrun, Kelsey, Melanie, Paulo, Jerry, Nina, um, Miriam, uh, Linda. So thank you all so much. Those are the ones I'm able to see right here anyway. So, all right, go for it. You know what to do next. Show up.
know that it's just content is just like life. It's just a chance to explore and to love and to express what you feel is the truth because that just strengthens that the positivity of that idea, strengthens the energy of that idea so it can help other people as well. All right, go for it. Be well.